Welcome everyone! Yes! Hi Shannon! It's a party, right? We are celebrating tonight. It's 11 o'clock in London, 12 o'clock in Europe, 6 p.m. Eastern time. What time is it, Antigua? 4, Antigua? Now 7 p.m. 7 o'clock. Party time. Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone to Hubdot. How are you? Wave, say hi. Happy, good. Yes, look at this. Oh my God, this is, is so wonderful to have you all here. So, wow, where do we start? We start with just a couple of things. We, we are tr going to try as much as we can to make this experience as human and physical as possible. So whether you make a heart, whether you go like that, whether you have a heart emoji, whatever you do, we clap with our hands, we try and really bring right, our movement into this. Otherwise, we're going to be in front of a screen and it's just really flat, okay? I, we are going to very quickly, Stefania, can you unmute yourself? Or do you want to explain to everyone how the evening is going to work with all the different part of it? And then I'll talk about a bit about Habdot. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Habdot. Um, hope you're all doing great. Um, what's going to happen tonight? So tonight we're here to connect as much as we can. Um, two favors or two requests. Please use the chat box. Um, the more you tell us about your story, yourself, your, your project, the more we can help you connect. So if you write, use the chat box as much as you can to write down, you know, link to your project, uh, what your story is, what you're looking for, and then we can help you connect. Um, and we are going to remind you throughout the evening about that. Um, we're going to hear stories. We're going to have some networking. We are then going to go into virtual rooms and then we're going to come back out and we're going to have some open mics. And Brenda Lee will tell you a little bit more about open mics later on. And really just to enjoy, come with open heart, open mind and just enjoy the evening and we'll, we're here for you. <laughs> You're muted, Simona. You're muted. Can you hear me okay? You can hear yeah. me okay. So the most, thank you so much, Steffi. The most important thing is the chat box. The chat box is the part that is going to be the interactive, the part where, as Stefania said, the more you tell us about you, questions, ideas, anything that you need, the more we can bring you inside the experience. So we're going to keep on saying chat box, please. Hey, that's it. You're using it. That's fantastic. So where do we start? I love to start by saying a massive thank you to Anthropology and to Jessica, because when we started Hubdot eight years ago, Anthropology was the first space that in London, when I was thinking with a group of friends of changing the rules of networking, I went knocking on their door and I said, will you please host a group of friends who are very tired of being labeled as women. We don't want to be in a box. We don't want to have the title. We just want to be together and celebrate our own individual stories. And Anthropology was 2012, said, of course you can come and use our space. And ever since we've been hosting all of our events all over the world. So I want to say a big thank you, Jessica, for making this possible. And do you want to say hi to everyone? Well done, hi. hands. Of course, Round of applause everybody, for thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Simona. I have to say, I had an incredible personal experience with the Hubdot ladies last year. We launched in New York City with an incredible party at our New York Rock Center store. And it was a night that I will truly never forget. It was such an emotional moving experience to have women and men across the board sharing their story, sharing their hopes for the future. It was just a magical night, and I know that tonight will be just the same, whether it's virtual or in person. We're all here for each other, and we have incredible things to share. So on behalf of Anthropology, we're thrilled to have you here with us, and we appreciate you as customers, as brand fans, as partners, as sisters. We love you all, and we're thankful to have you here. So let's have a fun night. Thank you so much, Jessica. Let's see, round of applause. Look at this. We're all together in this virtual room. So I want to tell you a little bit about the history of this incredible, incredible community that I have done is. And there's lots of different things. I don't want to do all the talking. 
I am very passionate. I'm very Italian. My Italianness comes out every time I, we host a Habdo Life Piazza because I grew up in a piazza in Italy, in the south of Italy. I come from Napoli. I don't know if you've been to Italy, to that part of the world, but I grew up with this very buzzing community. And then I came to London and I went from working in a, in a bank in the city to raising my kids, to doing a bit of jazz singing. And I felt that these worlds were very, very apart, that my jazz friend, my sort of incredible musician couldn't meet my corporate lawyer friend. And I felt that it was all, there was a lot of barriers. And I thought, this is crazy. We need to remove those barriers. We need to go to a space that is a human space where there is literally no judgment, where we can feel the best we can, no matter what our story is. And that was it, a very simple idea. Fast forward eight years, we start, we've been launching lots of different cities all over the world. We have Brenda Lee and Sally from Antigua. They started an incredible community. We went from Athens to Barcelona, Portland, Washington DC, lots of anthropology stores everywhere. But the, the, the philosophy is very simple. We want everyone to remove those labels. And so what we are going to do now, Gisela, if you could pull out the, the poll, we're going to ask you, let's see, what, what, is it, what is your mindset now? You got the dots at the back. So the red, you pick one, which is a mindset, okay? So we would love you to pick just one. Don't overthink it. Are you here because you feel established with knowledge you would like to share? Are you here with an idea and you like some help with? That's a yellow you want to be inspired, that's the green, the most popular dot all over the world. Blue, I'm here to make new connections. And purple, I would love to tell you my story. So please pick one, don't overthink it. It's just, they're just playful. They're a way of saying, this is my intention. I come here, open heart, open mind, and I pick my dot. So I think we got all the results. Gisela, do you, here we go, almost done. Okay, Gisela, do you want to talk us through what is what is the vibe of this room? What is this group? So the say? vibe of this room by a large majority is they're here to be inspired. So these are people who come truly with an open mind and open heart, trying Fantastic. to listen and share, followed by here to make new connections so that's fantastic because we will be connecting some of you who have already stories that are complimentary uh, and um, followed by I want to tell you my story we love that I'm established with knowledge to share and I have an idea can anyone help so this is fantastic so, so the idea of HubDot is that what the first point is we want to create a happy space we call it the happy space at HubDot okay so I hope you've got a drink have you got a drink, water, herbal tea, espresso, Campari? What do you have? Champagne. Look at this. Okay. So we need that, right? Because, it, and I would love actually to make a toast. I want to make a toast to celebrating, redefining womanhood. Because tonight, and I love to say thank you to all the men, everyone who come. Thank you, Nick, for joining us. Because this is what tonight is about. It's about feeling empowered around our own individual story of womanhood. And, that, and, and the idea is that when we unlock those stories, we share them with others, and all of a sudden we are part of just one community that is here to share and help. We say this every time. Habdot is a community where we say, how can I help you before saying, what can I get out of this for myself? And it's a beautiful altruistic mechanism. And the more you do it, and the more everyone says, wow, I heard that. I know somebody maybe on the other side of the world who could help. Or have you heard of this organization? We need to unlock this connecting alchemical machine. This is what tonight it's all about. So we've done the labels. Okay. I need to see all the shoulders. Like, you know, if you're really happy, very, very relaxed. But there's a second very important element. No matter where we are in the world, always have an incredible musician, a live, a live moment, live music, where we're all going to be muted, including myself, and we're going to enjoy music, and we're going to literally allow that lovely sort of, you know, space to really want to, you know, think. Ciao, Elena. Welcome, Elena. Dall'Italia. Come on, it's all in midnight. Thank you for being with us. So can we please welcome the most beautiful, where is Leila? I can see you. So everyone muted. And if you like to press speakers view, um, then you can obviously enjoy, um, you know, Leila much better. Um, please welcome Leila, round of applause for the most gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous moment of music. And here we go. Leila, over to you. Darling. Hi everyone. Hello. <laughs> I hope everyone's well. I thought um, before, sharing my um, piece of music that I would just, you know, tell my story a bit. So um, 
My name is Leila Lay, and I'm a singer, songwriter, and musician. I started my musical journey from the age of five, exploring and learning many musical forms. And I started with classical music, moved on into soul, did Motown and jazz. And I just fell in love with singing instantly once I saw how my voice touched people and evoked emotions out of the people that heard me. Um, and from such a young age, I just knew that, that that's what I wanted to do with, with my life and what I wanted to be in life. Um, and quickly my mantra became hard work always pays off. So in my teen years, I studied at the Brit School to pursue my dream and aspirations, just as Adele, Amy Winehouse and many others had. However, the realities of life hit me and I saw that unless you look a certain way, it's 10 times harder to make it. When I was 20 and bills had to be paid, I picked up jobs being a backing vocalist and I quickly realized that it was a lot easier being black in the backing vocal world as a lot of record labels look for that black sound um, but don't always want black singers being at the forefront um, and being the artists themselves. After experiencing that and feeling some of the highs of performing in front of masses of, of, of people and on enormous stages um, from, from the back and in the shadows, um, I kind of lost myself and I told myself, you know, this is fine. I'll abandon my dreams, you know, it's fine. I don't need to become an artist because it's just too hard for someone that looks like me. Then a couple years back, I randomly got the inspiration to pick up my lovely harp. Um, I'd always wanted to play the harp, um, but early on I was told that it was a white mus musical instrument. Um, ironic how though, one of the first pieces I wrote was inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement that um, you know, was going on last year, 2020, with you know, the murder of um, George Floyd. Um, and then my, my piece that I had written and that I was playing, it reached people from across the world. Um, and since playing the harp, it, 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 it was like I found my voice again. Um, Leila, have we lost Yeah, Leila? she's frozen. I thought it was me. No. Leila, can you hear us? It's okay. We'll come back. It will come back. No worries. Sorry Leila. about that. That's okay. You're back. Oh, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You're back. So um, so sorry about that guys. Um, as I was saying, um, since playing the harp, I felt like I found my voice again. Um, and I just had so much that I wanted to convey and evoke in people. And when I play and sing the two instruments, my voice and the harp, um, it just fit like a puzzle piece and expresses exactly just what I wanted to say. So to me, redefining womanhood means having the audacity to do anything and be anything that you want. Destroying boundaries that others have placed on you and doing whatever it is that you're told is not meant for you. Beautiful, Leila, stunning, stunning you. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna, we're gonna hear you now. So we're gonna yeah. mute ourselves. Are you, you okay? All set? Yeah, I'm ready, I'm all good. And, and, and then I'm going to quickly ask you, you're going to come back and I'm going to quickly ask you about the bathroom. Okay. Let me Thank just, you, Leila. No worries. Let me just share this. Yeah. Hands up so in the air. I'm going to be doing. Really close to you. Look, we're all there in the room with you. Life you're is You're all good. clapping. This is all for you. Way. 
Even if the sky is falling down, I know you're with me. Cause we have that flowers off the ground. I know you'll always be there telling me just how good life is. Oh, life is good. Life is good. I dream of hope. When the leaves start to brown, summer calls to close. Nature teaches us how, like a evergreen tree, staying true to how it should be forever green. Oh, life is free when I'm here and I'm proud. My missing puzzle piece. Stronger when you are found. Oh, I can't wait to see what the future might hold for me. But I pray for peace. Even if the sky is falling down, I know you're with me. Cause we know that flowers off the ground. I know you'll always be there telling me. Just how good life is. Oh, life is good. Life is good. Oh, life is good. Life is good. Oh, life is good. Life is good. Thank you. Bravissima, Leila. That was magical. That sound with the heart. Absolutely <laughs> beautiful. My darling, thank you so much for being with us. Come here. So, so at Hub Dot, we always ask you um, if you perform, or if you share your story, but there's a question that we will ask you over and over again. Mm -hmm. And here, here it comes. We have what we call the bartering. In a piazza in Italy, you exchange. You come. What do you give? What do you need? What do you offer? So mm -hmm. Leila, tell us, what is it that you're looking for? How can this community help you? And what is it that you can offer the community? It could be mm -hmm. anything, something small, something big. This is the time. Yeah. So um, for me, the main thing is, you know, I want to, I've already written some songs for an EP that I want to release featuring my vocals and, um, you know, the harp. Um, and I feel like I have so much to say but I just need um, some investments or, um, you know, investments for equipment in order to record um, the, the pieces that, that I've written and, and take it that step further so that it can reach as many people as possible. Um, because like I said, my, the music that I make and write, I don't just do it for the sake of it. It's to evoke something in people. Um, so that's one of the main things and, and maybe even like other creatives that are open to um, collaborating, photographers, yes. dancers, um, videos. So, so Leila, anything. they're asking you, somebody's saying, I have an idea and I want to help you. Look at the bot. Everyone is in the uh, three messages. So people connecting with you. Could you just say just very quickly, because it's a bartering, what is it that you offer? It could be anything. What is it that you make available? Um, I feel like I have to offer a unique sound that um, is is my unique selling point. You know, it's very rare to to find someone that that sings the way that I do and plays the harp at the same time. Um, so, Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Leila, like listen. Yeah. You stay with us. Thank you so much. Can I we give Leila a massive round of applause? Thank you. Thank that you, everyone. Beautiful. Thank you so much. The Lord, sound Lord. was thank great you. quality, and thank you so much. Really. No really worries. Happy. Thank you for having it me. Happen. Please have a look at the chat box and connect. There are three people do. looking for you. So, okay. So are we warm? Are we feeling, yes, we had the music. We picked the dot. We're all good. We got our drinks. We, we're all feeling really all together because this is, this is not one shared human space and magic does happen. Believe me, you will see. So I would love to welcome the first uh, storyteller. And we have the gorgeous Griselda who... We met, didn't we, in, 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 in New York City, and it, was, and it was alchemy. We didn't really have to explain too much. Because I just <laughs> said, I just understand what this is all about. I am one of you. That's what you said to me. Please welcome Griselda and her story. At Hubdot, we never introduce surnames. We never introduce titles. And then you can look them up on Instagram afterwards and discover who they are. So 
So here she is, Griselda and her story. Thank Welcome. you, Simona. Hello, everyone. How are you? I will try to don't look at all the faces and all the faces on the Zoom because I will get so nervous. Um, what an honor. What a pleasure to be here. We connect with the team. Um, I just, I love Hub Dot. I, I feel like I'm part of the Hub Dot team, even though I work for anthropology. <laughs> I I'm really love the team, the mission, and just the message. What we feel in the Rockefeller Center store two years ago was absolutely amazing and resonate with me till today. So I'm gonna try to tell my story. Um, the purpose of being here is to inspire somebody and to be authentic. So I hope you like it. I'm gonna read it because it's no way that I can speak English for so long. So <laughs> here we go. Um, I am a woman an immigrant and Latina, these are my superpowers. I am a woman who is being fearless in learning, growing and trying to make a difference in people's lives. As a professional psychologist, I believe that women who is less about politics and power and more about self-respect, self-love and identity. I'm a proud Latina. I was lucky that I grew up in Argentina where despite the perception of being a macho male-centric culture, the truth is that women have always been openly vital to success in all areas. Women rule the house, the family, and a lot of conversations. I have the best support from my parents, but my mom is and I was the biggest role model. She's a living example of what women can achieve. My mom was always productive. She raised four kids, had a full-time professional job, and help us support and assist parents, family, friends in endless way. One of her many acts of kindness was that she helped women struggling with multiple sclerosis to get to and from the hospital. I saw her, excuse me, as an amazing example of a good person, a kind and a generous person. It wasn't a woman sin or men sin, just the action of a good person. My mom is an example, empower me to seek my own path with courage and confidence. My journey started at 17 when I moved to Buenos Aires and from Patagonia. I study and work and let me become a therapy focusing on women issues and identity. It was hard, but very fulfilling. From there, I added immigrant to my list of superpowers I fell in love with in America and I moved to the United States where I reinvented my career and myself. In the US, I was introduced to different pressures as a woman, immigrant and Latina. What a revelation, but I always look for opportunities to use my perspective, learning, passion, and I didn't, all, and I didn't let others define me. When I was introduced to anthropology, I saw an opportunity to connect with women and help them see themselves and their life in the most beautiful way, through fashion and self-expression. Working at Antro has allowed me and encouraged me to seek new ways to connect and really engage with women all over the country, all over the world, actually. Besides work, I spend my time supporting my community nationally and internationally, and I'm helping families during difficult times. It is a lot to do, but as they say goes, a women's work is never done. Today, I embrace all my superpowers and empowers others to do the same. To me, redefining womenhood is about helping women self-actualize and step into their powers. I believe equally needs to be established early, built into education system and reinforced by family, friends, and society. What are your superpowers? Thank you. Brava Griselda! Brava Griselda! Yeah. <laughs> Amore, well done. Thank I know you. you felt really emotional talking about your love. Very mama. emotional. Very emotional. And when you were talking about that, somebody would say, our mama's just the best, right? Oh my goodness. Right. Can I read something that someone read said so beautifully? Um, Sunday is Mother's Day in, in, in London. So uh, shout out to moms. My mom is my hero, a pillar of strength and love. I will forever aspire to be more like her, Nick. 
Aren't mums the best? My mum is a nurse and I'm proud of her every day. Shout out to all the mums. <laughs> yes, Griselda. <laughs> well done. Big heart. So Griselda, for the barter in the piazza, what is it that you are looking for? And what, right now, you know where you are and what is it that you offer? Something that it could be a skill. It could be just, a, you know, because I've got an idea. You know what I'm like, but I'm not going to say it. I'm going to ask you first and then I'm going to, I'm going to say it. So, so what is it that, how can we help you? Can this community help? I think what I is I think what I have to offer and what I need I this are the same. It's just authenticity. I'm I'm thinking for for putting the same place what I feel, what I think, and my actions, which are is truly hard, easy to say and, and hard to, to do. So I can offer authenticity, but also I'm, I'm looking for for authentic connections, authentic relationships. That is beautiful, Griselda. <laughs> can I can I go? Can I can I just also say something? You you you're a wizard in many many aspects, right? And mm -hmm. and I'm just thinking there's a lot of people just reading through their stories that maybe people are starting their businesses and then projects and on social media. I mean, could it be maybe that somebody could just come to you? You know, people are looking for a mentor, an idea of how even you know to to launch a project on social media. I'm just thinking of that. Would it be happy to connect yes. around that? Absolutely. Beside my former job at anthropology, I'm a mentor, a natural mentor. So as right now, I'm mentoring women to find basically a new career path or to find a job. So when I see I'm when I say I'm mentor there, I'm basically helping them to de develop resume, LinkedIn, prepare for an interview, whether it's body language, whether it is um, I mean all the aspects of prepare for an interview. So if somebody um, is looking for this type of mentorship, more like in the career, um, I'm, I'm willing to, to take Rizalda, it. Griselda, thank you so much. And if, and if you could share your details in the chat box. Can we give Griselda a massive round of applause? Thank you. That's so lovely. Griselda, gracias. Thank you. And can thank we introduce, you. can we go to Zoe? Zoe, please say where, where you are based as well, where you're calling in from, because we've got lots of places from all over the world. Uh, please welcome Zoe and thank you so much for being with us. Round of applause, hands up. Come on, let's, let's, let's show our warmth. Hi, Zoe. Hello, hello, hello. I'm calling in from Mississippi, so I'm all the Yay. way on. So yes. So for my story, wow. I'm really trying to hold back tears at this particular moment. So bear with me. I'm going to be like the other ladies and I'm going to have to read mine so I won't cry. Um, I never dreamed that I would one day be a spokesperson for children with no voices. See, when I was a child, I had no voice. I never allowed myself to dream. I felt like my past was going to always define my present, my future. Until one day, my fourth grade teacher, Dr. McKay, told me that I had choices. See, the same mom that you guys was excited about, I had no mom growing up, but I had teachers. I could choose, Dr. McKay said, I could choose to allow what happened to me to dictate my future, or I could choose to make something of myself. So I determined that day that I was gonna do something. Being a young girl growing up in kinship care, moving around from place to place, it left me in a place where I didn't know how to read or write. I didn't know any of those things because I wasn't in a situation long enough to learn. But until Dr. McKay said I had choices, I felt like at that moment I could change. So I took her up, took her up on that offer to make something of myself. Needless to say, that same year she taught me how to read to find my confidence and my courage. I had to move again. But that move this time was different because I was different. I knew how to read. I ended up graduating number seven out of a hundred students that year. Wow. And I had a full ride to college. I became a social worker because I wanted to give a voice to the voiceless. I've always remembered Dr. McKay, even when I went back to school to get my master's and my doctorate. <laughs> my voice was the voice that gave me and other little girls the ability and the courage to move on. Fast forward today. <laughs> this, I am Dr. Zoe Jamison Shanks. And I'm a trauma specialist and I help those who feel like their voices have been covered up by pain. 
I help voiceless to find their confidence so that they can live their best life on purpose and for purpose. I'm refining womanhood through my tenacity, my confidence, my stepping into my purpose and helping other women be confident out loud on purpose and for purpose. And that's my story. Wow, beautiful. Simona, you're muted. This is so amazing. Oh my goodness. Thank you so Zoe, much. That was absolutely beautiful. Hello, Zoe. <laughs> oh, well done you. How wonderful we made it happen. I'm so happy. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling very emotional. It was so, the tone of your voice. Somebody was just saying on the chat, Sifana, do you want to read the chat? Um, Steffi? Someone said, Sarah said, teachers can be lifesavers. They can make or break a child's success. Having a brilliant teacher who believes in you is transformational in so many ways. Your story, the evolution in it is beyond powerful, Zoe. And it is. Thank you. Zoe, we have, we have a connection with you. There's somebody uh, on here, Angela Powell. Uh, Angela, will you say hi? That's a connection and alchemy for you. Angela, will you just say wave? Just unmute yourself. So Angela, can you, can you see each other, Zoe? This is Angela hi. in London. Hi. Okay. So you two, this is an most exciting mm. connection ever. And you both know why. So please, one is in Mississippi, one is in London, but literally you're so aligned and mm. ah, I get emotional just connecting mm. you. But Zoe, uh, so please exchange on the chat box. Could you just tell us, Zoe, what is it that you need right now? You're involved in some amazing projects uh, involving children. Give us a real practical, tangible example, how we can help you. And what is it that you can offer apart from this incredible wisdom? And somebody said the tone of your voice, we could listen to you for hours and hours and hours, like read me my bedtime stories. Zoe. Well, the first thing I want to say is what I can offer is I literally help women build their confidence. It's something about when you didn't have any confidence and you gain your confidence, you find the courage to help others find theirs. And so that's what I can give to the community. Currently, I am working on residential facilities for young ladies who were just like me, going in and out of kinship care, maybe aging out of the system. And so that's the project that I'm working on currently at this particular moment. And is it, and is it funding that you're looking for? Is it, at what stage are you at? You got the project? Is it already done? Right now we're in the building stage. So we're in the, uh, we just did our business proposal, proposal and we took it to investors. And so we kind of have some people filling, you know, filling it out to see if they're going to be part of it. But it, it's, it's very promising, man. We have to give back to our young people because they need us. And because God has allowed us to move forward, it's time to help other people move forward as well. Absolutely. Zoe, my darling, will you, will you write down your details, your Instagram details on the chat box and have a look at it? And with Angela Powell, I'm very, very excited. Uh, thank you so much. Round of applause for Zoe. That was absolutely stunning. Can we please have Kate? Kate, will you unmute yourself? Tell us where you're calling us from and, and let's hear you. Hi, Kate. How are you? Hi. Hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. I think I've cried three different times now and I might do it again. So I'm in San Diego. I'm so touched to be part of um, such a powerful group of women. And of course, Simona, be putting this together. I expected nothing less. So um, yeah, I wrote down um, what redefining womanhood is for me. And then I have a poem to share that um, captures that for me. So redefining woman, and I'm still finding my voice. Zoe, so it was so nice to hear, hear your confident voice before this. Mine might be a little shaky. Redefining womanhood for me has been about healing trauma, forgiving the patriarchy, and claiming the inherent feminine power and beauty within, and as a bodily temple. Releasing the need to be validated by the masculine for what I hold of value is invisible and impossible to grasp except by the heart. Who I am cannot be proven and validated. It can only be expressed and celebrated. During all my cycles of redefining womanhood, I found healing and self-discovery through poetry. I'm gonna share a piece now. 
My eyes will be closed to help me focus within. And this piece is called, A Discovered Soul's, this piece is called, A Discovered Soul's Dance. Although my legs are tired, worn and mired by experience delirious in cries of help, I prevail now strong as hell for this is what shapes me. I reflect saintly as tastefully weightless as the delusion initially baitless. For mastery becomes salvation when starvation is wasted. And so now here, I take it all in. These tired feet of sin, their footsteps, the foundation where my pillars begin, stand tall and hover in awe of such heavenly stance. A discovered soul's chance to finally dance. First time for Kate. performing it. Okay, that was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We got you can tell everyone where where uh, I feel particularly moved. I'm really sorry if I'm completely losing it tonight. You got our heart. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being the space to share it first time. Thank you. Kate, my darling. Yeah. Tell, yeah. tell us. Tell us, tell us with the community, you do some incredible work on yeah. professionally. Tell, tell us what is it that you can offer? What is it that we can help you or anything? You know, a practical skill and a skill exchange, an idea, yeah. anything, right? Yes. And, and like many women here, I have my hands in a lot of different um, buckets. But I, what's coming to mind is I started hosting a space on Quilt. It's a beautiful um, where we have group chats and, and group conversations. And um, it's Mondays, it's called Sexy Wombin, W-O-M-B-A-N. It's a space for women to come and really heal and deeply connect with our womb space. Um, I started hosting that at seven on Mondays, um, Pacific Coast time. Um, future, I'll offer an early one as well for others that may be... Um, on the East Coast or in other parts of the world. I would just love to come, uh, to have you come and share that space and participate. It's um, interactive and um, I have different, um, I just, I share different ways to heal and connect to our womb. And it's just a space for sisters to come together and really heal and learn more about what that healing looks like. Yes. Hey, thank you, my darling. Will you share, how can people get hold of you? Because I know that you're, you, you decided to, to move yes I love social media quilts my only social media so if that speaks to how special it is um um and I'm, I'm redoing my website in this new platform so I am a bit elusive if you join quilt I'm on there uh Kate and my last name I don't know. What do you think, Simona? I mean, I think Kate, well, you can, if you're boring. happy to share your email, if you're happy to share your email address yeah. in the chat box, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, I think maybe that's sure. the best Sure. Yes, way. I also do okay? trauma healing. If you're interested and I could send more work to you, I'll put so it should, in the chat box. I and think the chat out. box. Yeah. That would be Lovely. amazing. Can we, say, can we say a big thank you to Kate for thank sharing you. that and how thank absolutely you. beautiful and how precious the spoken words were. Thank you so much. And we come to the last story. And before we go to the open mic, which is going to be very exciting. And Brenda, you're going to tell us a little bit in a moment. Um, can we please welcome Cassandra? Cassandra, you're ready. Um, everyone, round of applause. Hands up in the air, beating hearts for Cassandra. Cassandra, welcome. And here you go. Off to you. Okay, so I'm going to try to really focus on my story right now in two minutes because I know what's going to happen at the end of it. I know how emotional I'm going to be at the end of this. So... My story is 50 years in the making, but I'm gonna read it because it's the only way that I can get it to two minutes. And then I'm gonna to totally lose my shit. Just warning everybody. So it took me 47 years to accept myself and it took a total stranger 10 seconds. 
I needed the first for the second to happen. But once it did, once those two levels of acceptance happened, I felt complete. Two years ago on International Women's Day, 2019, I came out as trans. It was March 2019 when I began a full dose of estrogen and I announced to the world that I was beginning my transition. I still had a different name. I still had an M on all my official documents. And I did look a little different than I do today. But I finally accepted who I was. I finally gave myself permission to be the person I've known my whole life that I am, to finally define my womanhood that had been trapped by a half century of expectations placed on me by culture and society and family. So to quote the immortal words of Abba, I took a chance on me. And one of the very first things that I did when I accepted myself is I walked into an anthropology store. I was shaking with fear. I was utterly terrified that I was gonna be rejected. And I walked up to a total stranger who worked there and I asked if I could try on some clothes. And without any hesitation at all, I was welcomed with open arms. My self-identity was embraced. My self-acceptance as a woman was accepted by another woman. And in that moment, so many of my assumptions about what I was supposed to be, who I was supposed to be, how I was supposed to look, they melted away. The gift of unconditional acceptance, and as far as I'm concerned, that's unconditional love, it immediately opened up what seemed like unlimited new horizons. I know that accepting oneself can be ridiculously hard work. It took me half a century to embrace my authentic self and I almost didn't make it. I almost gave up. I almost chose death over rebirth. Accepting someone else for who they are is a superpower that we all possess. It's a gift that we can give each other on a daily basis. And it's a gift that just might change someone's life or even save it. And the reason I am totally losing it right now is because I had a different answer prepared for what redefining womanhood means. But I noticed that my daughter is participating in this event. I've seen her name in the chat box. I know that she's here. It means so much to me to connect with her over this experience. So that's what it means to me, that the two of us can share this as two women and we can be here present in this space. Cassandra. My darling, this... Oh. Wow. Because Cassandra, I was blessed to get to meet Cassandra two years ago when all of this connection with anthropology started. And she walked in one of our fashion shows, which was absolutely incredible. And I have been lucky enough to call her a friend and have her a part of my life ever since. And Cassandra, I'm, I'm literally so emotional, although I've heard your story before. Hearing it in that space with these people, it's just incredible. Thank you for sharing it with everyone. Thank you. Cassandra, thank you so much for being with us, for, for trusting us with your story. And, and it's so wonderful. I didn't even know your daughter was here. And where, where, where is she? Can we say hi? Can she say hi? Oh, hi. <laughs> where are you? Um, I just turned my camera off because I'm a mess. But I'm so proud of my mom. Look at her. She's beautiful. She's scratching it. Oh, my we're all a mess. Look, we just want to say thank you so much. Oh my God, I, I literally, I had no idea this was going to happen. So I was ready to sell my book. Like, I wanted to sell my book. This is so much more meaningful. Oh my God. Lydia, I love you so much. And thank you for your love. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you. Lydia, we can see you. Hi, Lydia. You don't look a mess. You're beautiful. Oh my goodness. How proud are you? This is just, so, oh, literally we, you can feel right. We're, we're in the opposite corners of the world and literally we are all giving you both a massive hug and this is just incredible. And, you know, it, I mean, redefining womanhood and talking about, you know, empowerment and talking about, you know, how we can literally write, you know, our own story and own it. It's, it's, thank you so much, Cassandra. I, Lydia, <laughs> where are you, Lydia? Where, where do you live? 
I'm in Chicago, so. Um, oh wow! So what is it? Why don't you why don't you give us why don't you give us a request for alchemy? Tell us about you. What is it that we that we can what you're looking for? Who are you looking to connect with? Come on, let's hear alchemy from Lydia, Cassandra, if you agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> oh, what a nightmare to be put on this spot. <laughs> um, Why? It's like a magic wand. You just go. What would I like to connect with? Is it? Are you still studying? Are you working? Would you like literal um, interest? Just I'm working. I guess just to be um, like with the pandemic, I haven't felt like such a like an artist. So I think to be more expressive and authentic, I think would be really great. But I'm really just here to support Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> Lydia, that's so lovely. And maybe Griselda, you you're the connection for Lydia. Cassandra, you so you can you just quickly tell tell us you got your book. Ready? Come on, mention your book. We got to hear about. Oh my that. god, who, give, who gives a crap about my book at this point? Like seriously, come on, that was, wow. inc that was incredible. Yeah, we got really good. Book. We got sixty I, of us here. Of course, we want to hear about your book. Are you kidding? Okay, okay. Anyway, check me out on Instagram. I have a book coming out in a couple of weeks, and the book is the book is this story. But the book is not. It's not like a vanity project. The book is not about. Oh my god, look at me! Look at all the stuff that I've done. I've intended the book as a mirror because what I'm what I'm seeking, the reason I'm participating in this and what I'm looking for, what I look for in every engagement is connection. It's authentic connection. And so my book is my gift to facilitate that connection with other people. And it is a story of so many things told by someone who just happens to be trans. And so I would like to encourage people to give it a chance um, because I've written it in a way that I hope they find some of themselves uh, in the pages. Thank you. Robbie. Hi, Cassandra. Beautiful, beautiful words. And I just wanted to say, as a trans person myself, it's so amazing to have um, brilliant representation, powerful representation for the trans community, not only here, but in all spaces, with a book coming out as well. Yes, we feel like we have to educate people a lot, but I know a lot of what you do is very much rooted in in love and in self-love and confidence building for other people and I'm so happy that you can share that with everyone and your gift is your your book your writing your story um yeah welcome and thank you thank you wow thank you so much Robbie and thank you Cassandra round of applause and massive heart the time has come to go into two smaller piazzas of connections we're gonna break this group we're gonna and then we're gonna come back all together so please don't go anywhere but my magic we're gonna be transferred i'm gonna play a little bit of music we're gonna go into a networking room where we're just gonna have a bit more time to get to know each other and there's there's a couple of connections that we want to we want to see happening uh, and then we're gonna come back here main piazza for the open mic uh and that's it we're gonna play music <laughs> And we're going to so, go. Is I'm going to move you all. If you are not moving, stay, be calm. I will move you, okay? So one, two, You're three. Moving. We just play music. Okay, so you're here because I haven't moved you. So I'm going to be moving you really quickly, okay? Gisela, you better not, you better not move me. I told you your voice is zen to me. <laughs> you don't want to go. Sorry, I'm a bit, I'm doing this blind. I'll, I'll let you stay. Thank you. Um, how many, because it's just a little bit of a delay, you see. How beautiful was that story with Cassandra and her daughter? I'm a mess. It's embarrassing. I ugly cried, but it's okay. Right, you know. I'm, I, to be honest with you, I, because I'm always having to be so focused on the 
techy bit, making sure that people don't get kicked out or whatever. I sort of listen, but I can't fully, you know, lose it. And I always have Simona sending me messages in the background, so I have to read. <laughs> so where are you? Where are you, uh, Shannon? You're in my in Florida. Oh, now you're you're muted. Is it just you and me in a room? I'm confused. Yeah, now you don't. You, I'm not sending you to a room. You and I stay in the main room. There you go. Um, I'm in Florida. Do, hold on, let me just ask. Um, tell me what time should I bring you back? What time should I bring you back? <laughs> Literally. Jesus. And I've got somebody as well contacting me through saying, okay, don't worry. Gisela, yes. I did my makeup for this, and then I just ugly cried through the whole, I mean. Let me tell you, this is all Zoom makeup, yeah? It's all it's uh, that, on Zoom. It's, it's that fucking one year, sorry for my language, but like, I just miss being in the room and the energy, and I just feel like these events, you can feel it. Like so many times I Zoom friends, I Zoom No, but it's, and you know what it is, is that it. they're so literally powerful. You know, you yes. normally wouldn't do this. You wouldn't go to a stranger in the street and say, yes. by yeah. the way, but this yeah. is the equivalent, okay? And we need them because we need a bit of a, today I had a, a major disaster. My um, laptop charger died and I couldn't charge my laptop. And I had to drive all around trying to find, and you know that excitement because I was going to a shop, they said, sorry, you can't come in. I just actually felt really good because I felt it's the first time in months I do something unplanned. Spontaneous. That's you know, so I need true. to, and now get in the car, and now I want to go to the bus, and I have to, because every day is just so planned. Do, do you know who Esther Perel is? She does podcasts, she writes books. Esther Perel? So no, she, it rings she's a bell. Incredible. She's a sex therapist, but she has a podcast. She does, She writes books. She's incredible, but she, I was on a talk with her the other day, and she coined it so perfectly. She said, it's ambiguous loss because we can't define it yet. We don't know what it looks like. So we're just all sitting here and we haven't really started the grieving process yet because we don't know what we're even yeah. grieving yet. And it's just, when she said that, I was like, ambiguous loss. Like that is so- You know, I, I have to say that I do miss, but I'm feeling a bit anxious about going back to normal life. Yeah. Not about catching the virus so much because everybody's getting vaccinated. Right, 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 right. It's just about being, I, I don't know, I feel like- You feel like it's not gonna be as much of a connection. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if people have changed, if my friends have changed. Yeah. Hello, a Felicia. Lot have, have, a lot of mine have, because we've been, we've had no restrictions. So yes, you mentioned. I, talk, I talk about how I'm not even in the shared reality anymore with people that I used to think were family or friends. I'm like, you don't care if I get sick. You don't care. Like it's, it's going to be very different when the world opens up. Like I'm going to be, I'm going to be protective of like who I spend my time with. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the same. I, you know, I feel that now is sort of, I, I can choose, you know, yes. And there are people who I'm happy to continue seeing on a, on a Zoom, but the, uh, but people who I want to spend time physically with, they yeah. they are, you know, I'm not going to be saying yes, let's have a coffee, just so willy nilly, you know. Thank I'll you. think about it before I say that. Um, Reprioritize everything in our lives. It's been, it's. I know how much of a privilege it is to say that. I think there's been a lot of blessings in the last year because so many people have lost their lives. But I also feel like if I'm still standing, I need to celebrate every moment because those people would want me to. So it's like, there's been so much beauty that's also come out of this and just- I agree, I agree. I mean, it's uh, it is very sad and I, I am blessed that I know of people who have passed away because of COVID, but I knew, you know, they're not, you know, I, 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 I obviously, sorry for that for them leaving us right but they were not that close to me that on my day to day i will wake up and i will go to bed with them on my mind which you know i can't imagine that's just at a different plus, level I mean, plus, plus if i were someone who had passed 
I wouldn't want someone to read me. I would be like, you're, you're I mean, still I, alive. I used to learn a lot on the, you know, the first, you know, in that, in, um, when we've got into the first lockdown in March, I found it really weird because I felt like I'm at home and thousands of people are dying out there and I don't see it, you know, you don't see it, you don't feel it, it was quiet. And it was, I started listening to all these really sad audiobooks of people who told South story because I felt like I needed to grieve. I felt like I wanted to cry, but I couldn't because I just, you know, from my, from my window, it looked like a glorious spring day. Yeah. You know? It's bizarre. It's a weird, it's a, the past year is so hard to, you can't define it. It's been such a, it was the longest year of my life, the shortest year of my life, the most beautiful. I mean, for, the most for painful, here life. in the UK, we still don't have, since before Christmas, we haven't had any single restaurant open, any shop. Yeah. So this is going to be a catastrophe for people's lives. What's, what's hard. So there's mm -hmm. like two, two sides of the coin, right? So I feel so bad for you guys because you've been in lockdown and taking this very seriously. On the other side of that, because I live in a state where we've never had restrictions, yeah. I've lost people close to me because I we don't have anything in common anymore because they just yeah. disregard human life. So it's like there are parts of me that actually wish we were in lockdown because I wouldn't feel like I'm by myself. Like my my boyfriend and I haven't left our house since last March. I haven't seen my family in a year. Yeah. And it's like our friends and family are like, just come see us. You're crazy. Like, it's not that big of a deal, the survival rate. And I'm like, my parents are in their 60s. Like, I'm not going to be the one that yeah. potentially kills my parents. So and I, and I know really all families who have killed their parents, you know? It's just well, uh, obviously totally, uh, you know, but yeah. It's not that they disregard the, the, the measures, they follow the measures, but obviously the parents were older and, you know, one of the kids got ill and then they got ill. They they survive it, but the father didn't, you know? And my parents are the opposite. My parents, I mean, I'm sure you know about President Trump. My yes. parents are Trump supporters and I'm yes. the opposite and they're anti-maskers. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to come visit you. Like, there to me there has to, i don't want to say like you have to be punished for your actions yeah but at the same time like there has to be boundaries there's like, consequences I'm, absolutely consequences i'm not going to come see you because i don't want to get you sick yeah no it's um it's been a a, a very very interesting time i mean I, I i i was in new york for this event that griselda was talking on the 25th of february and i remember talking to friends um and say how if this pandemic gets really serious how are americans with no private health insurance going to survive so, how are they the going to the minorities in this like oh, i live in one of the wealthiest country or uh, counties in the whole united states and to watch these wealthy white people just travel, go out to all the restaurants, not give a shit about anybody else. It's been, it's been horrific, but I also like, again, it's been eye-opening. And I'm so glad that I've seen that part of it because I was living in my own privilege. And to see that side of it and be like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe this is even happening in 2020. Yeah. Let me see, hold on. I got a message here probably saying to me, bring us back. And I, uh, I'm just here. We're just in our own world. Bring us back. <laughs> in eight minutes. She told me that. Oh, yeah. She told me that at 52. So, okay, in a minute, I have to bring them. I'm just going to double check. Sometimes they say that and then they change their mind. And they don't bring me back. Actually, I'm going to see. So I can send a message. Hold on a second. I can uh, broadcast a message to all. One minute left. One minute left. Let's see. So you're doing, are you doing this storytelling course? Yes, I am. How's it going? How did you find out about it? 
through the last hub dot when you guys had your eight year anniversary. Oh, so you came to the anniversary for the eight, and that was the first piazza for you. I met, yes, and I met, I met Simona on chat. On Clubhouse. Clubhouse, I said chat house. And then two weeks later, I think, was the event. It was crazy. Yes, and then yes, this, yes. I've had 24 hours to practice when I'm about to story tell. It's going to be a mess. You want to practice? Okay, no. an extra one. Are you see. You say they're telling me a couple more minutes, okay? I can't and then somebody will say, "Oh no, okay." Two more minutes. I don't know how y'all are up this late. I go to bed at nine p.m. my time. I go to bed. Yeah, I mean, I'm not looking at the time because if I knew the time, oh, I'll be I'll be sleeping. Bless um, thank you for this. I'm drinking like lots of water. I'm thinking I had a glass of wine. I brought some wine. I'm thinking I can't because I will fall asleep. Hello, Carolyn. I can't see you or I can't hear you. Did you escape from a room? <laughs> she escaped. Oh, oh, she's gone. There you go. She's gone. Yeah, the story thing, I'm, the storytelling workshop that I'm doing with you guys, it's so funny because I'm, I'm sure that I hear this is pretty common, that I'm more confident speaking in, two, in front of 200 people than one. Yeah. Because it's, when it's one person, they're like this. Because that's all yeah. there is to pay attention to. So I'm nervous about the coaching call next week. I'm like, Whoa. yeah, I'm. I find I can talk on my phone on Zoom, not a problem. But if it's physical people, my throat gets dry straight away. So I am. Um, yeah. Sense. I think the hard thing with being on Zoom, like I practice my story on like the photo booth app just so I could see in video what what it was like. But it's so hard because you're like, do I look at the camera? Do I look at someone? Am I going to get distracted? <laughs> and then you're just like, I'm going to close my eyes the whole time. <laughs> and I may end up reading half of it. I don't know. Okay, let's have a look. One minute left. I'm going to give two more minutes. So I have another minute to go. I'm going to send them a message saying, another minute. <laughs> you know what, what I'm going to I'm, I'm, gonna I'm gonna run to the bathroom. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, 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 don't worry, don't worry. Even when they come back, they're gonna have a little. I ran. That's the most workout I've had. I was going to say. A month. <laughs> I was running. Luckily, I have a small okay. house. Now I'm going to close all of the rooms. I'm... All right, I'll see you in there. Yeah. No, they're all coming back here, so you don't need to move. Oh. They're all coming here. I'll mute myself. How about that? Okay, off I go. So they're giving 60 seconds to return. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, people are crying. Uh-oh, that's not good. Welcome, everybody. It's not good, but it is good, Gisela. Okay, okay, you okay. A great job. <laughs> I hope I didn't close down in the middle of something. Where's Simona? We lost her? Simona. She's stuck in the cloud. Yeah. Oh, we're back. Everyone is back. Oh, everybody's back. Yes, we made it back to the main piazza. That's amazing. Come on. Thank you, Zoom. Thank you, Mr. Zoom. <laughs> You're welcome. You're muted, Simona. Everyone is back. Is everyone back, Gisela? You can tell. Everybody's back. This, unless somebody got you know, stop in, I don't know, in transition between the reality and the breakout room. I think everybody's back. This is incredible. So listen, I, I just, I, we would love to have some open mics now. We got time. I mean, what, we're, we're running a little bit late. It's, what is the time? We, we're okay? 
are we okay with time, Jessica? I'm just looking at you. You're fine. I thought we had until 7.30. So Fantas however long you want to go is totally fine. This is, so we, we want to hear, so we want to hear some open mics in the main piazza. We want to try and make some connections in between the groups. Okay. So whether you had Gisela, some in your group, we had some as well. There was, there were a lot of, you know, um, there is Lee Fan who is working on an incredible project uh, on, you know, sustainability and she really wanted to connect with people. So please unmute yourself. Let's hear your stories, your open mic. You have one minute to share it. Angela, do you want to go first? Angela Powell? <laughs> How did I know what you were going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Angela. Round of applause for Angela. Come on. So we, we always say, Brenda Lee, do you want to, in fact, Angela, bear with me one second. Brenda mm. Lee, because I completely forgot. Will you just say to everyone, what is the secret of sharing your story in a minute or so, Brenda Lee? Hi everyone, it's been a great evening so far. The one minute story, just get to the heart of, of the ask and the desire. Just don't worry about the language or brevity, just get to the core. What is it that you want? What do you want to share? How vulnerable do you want to be? And go for it. So we'd be a Brenda, poem. do you want to tell us your story quickly and, and your link with Hubdot and where you are calling us from? I'm from Antigua, London, born and raised live in Antigua. Um, Nicole, who's, uh, Nicole Gadsden, Antonia Gadsden came to uh, Updot in London, came back to Antigua and said to Sally, who's on this call as well, hi Sally, and I to, uh, let's have a Updot event in Antigua. And we were like, oh, okay. And it just went, it, it took off and a lot of persons attended our events because in the end, everyone has a story to tell and wants to be heard. And that's the magic of, what happened to the hub dot in Antigua is that we took away the labels, we took away people's perceptions of each other. So your whole minute, your storytelling right now is telling us who you are. Sorry, my niece is on this call. Hi, Rosie. Oh, you're looking in London. Hi, Rosie, your niece is on the call. This is so nice. So the one minute story is to tell, you, to tell us something about yourself, an ask or a, a, a desire that you have or just a story you want to share in a minute so we can connect in a more meaningful way. Thank you so much, Brenda Lee. And we always say, even if you are talking about a product and you're pitching and you're selling lipstick, I don't know, please turn that into a story. So try and share it in a story so we can emotionally connect with it. Okay, this is the whole point of a story in one minute. So welcome, first open mic, Andrew, and then Shannon, you're next. Round of applause, please to Angela Powell, all the way from London town. <laughs> Where is Hi, everyone. Hi, Daddy. Hi. Hi, everybody. So nice to be here and so nice to just hear what everybody's got to say. But let me not eat into my one minute. Okay. So my name's Angela and I am a qualified social worker. I've worked in child protection for over 17 years. Um, and through the course of that, I've been exposed to children, but not just children, but women and men who are trapped in negative cycles, um, adverse childhood experiences, and just feeling like that's it for them. Life is over for them. They can't progress, they can't do better. So having that experience mixed with going through a number of things in my own life, I've created a online storytelling um, platform on Instagram called Greater Than. And it's a platform which started off for women to tell their, their greater than story. And I've now opened it, opened it up to men, haven't had any stories from men as yet. But if you go on the page, you'll see that there are women who have shared their stories about divorce, low self-esteem, um, domestic abuse. There's just so many stories on there. And so what I'm trying to do is get more stories for the Instagram page, but I'm hoping, well, what I'm trying to do now is to develop it into a magazine. So it would be a magazine that has greater than stories, but I also want to try and get in connection with people who, who may also want to contribute what they do. So to have like a wellness section, music se section, fashion section. And then on the flip side of that, I also want to put together a greater than book. And the greater than book is a book of greater than stories. But the purpose of that is for it to be distributed to prisons, men's and women's prisons, to women's refuges, to hospitals, to mental health units, because ultimately my goal and my aim is to in inspire, to motivate and to provoke people to change and to help people to realize that there is hope, that there is light at the end of the tunnel 
and that they can be greater than and they are greater than than what they've been through. So that's my story. Well done, Angela. Bobby, do you want to jump in? Yeah, Angela, wow, that's amazing. I know there are so many people here who would probably love to share their story um, through the, the many platforms that you're, you're putting together and planning. So everyone, please do drop in the chat if you're interested in getting involved with Angela's projects. That sounds wonderful. Um, I know we've got someone here. Uh, Kirsten, would you be interested in sharing your story? Are you still here? I know you were keen to do an open mic. Do we have Kirsten? Hi, Kirsten. Is that, was that me? That's you. Hello. Would you like oh, to? Oh, hi. Hi. Um, that was that was beautiful. This is a good follow to that because um, my name is Kirsten and I'm from Southern California. I'm an identical twin that is um, advocating for lupus patients. And so much has been in the news this past year from the medications to the um, racial disparity with um, patients. Um, if you can see, that's my sister on the left and um, lupus represents, um, you know, it's an autoimmune disease that my sister's had for 25 years. I am a huge supporter. We go to DC, we advocate. And just to learn about it, um, we um, are part of a foundation in um, California, but I have three teenage daughters and my late mother-in-law also had lupus. So anything you can do to learn and share, that's really my goal. My background is um, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, but this whole year, um, so many things have come out that really bring to light such um, differences in healthcare and care and the racial disparity. So if I can be a bridge to educate others, spread awareness, um, more cures will be on the horizon. There are only currently four drugs for, for lupus and um, the story needs to be heard and told. And there's just way too many, and, and we've already known about the racial disparity, women of color, um, are more predisposed um, to lupus. My, my twin is doing well, but um, that's the voice we do. We create these um, pins. It represents our Chinese heritage and some of the lupus colors. Oh. The butterfly is the um, symbol of hope. So I'll that's put in funny. the chat my Instagram and I'd love to have just support and may is the big awareness. Thank yes, you for the there are two. Thank, that's beautiful. There are two messages for you from Elizabeth okay. and Brenda. So if you can have a look on the on the. Oh, notes, okay. The, thank you the, so much. The text. Thank you. you. I appreciate so it. Please have a look and share your Instagram. Okay. Thank you for sharing you, Robbie. Who's next? I'm just going into anthropologies. I love the creativity in the store. I, that's like my little, just little slice of just looking at what's done in the stores. The creative. I have such a creative uh, mind and three teenage daughters. One is in college, one I'm about to launch. Um, she's a senior in high school. And, um, you know, girls, just daughters and women, just, I, I've loved Love hearing that. So Kirsten. thank you. Thank you so much thank for sharing you. that with us. Amazing. Um, and I just want you to touch on that because I just wanted to say that the, what I found always extraordinary about anthropology, and we've had a relationship for eight years, is that, you know, anthropology, when we could obviously be there in the store and, you know, soon, soon we'll be back with physical events surrounded by incredible beauty you know all around and fashion and design yet being able to share very authentic and deep stories and stories of social impact stories of uh -huh. you know really you know, and and we've had this incredible support in eight years and for me it's a very important thing to say that you know that you you've been with us all the way in every city around the world allowing us to literally to have on that stage I even feel emotional so about this sweet. stories oh. from everywhere and you've never ever um you know told us what the content of those events had to be you you just said you come and use this space mm -hmm. and you create your lab life piazza so is this I want to publicly thank you so oh, much you're uh, Jessica, so kind Simona creating this because it's 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 touching lives in you know it's eight years so okay we are um, lucky we're lucky to have you in our lives that is for certain 
Thank you so much, Jessica. Robbie, who's next? I think it's Shannon, all the way from Florida. Yes, we'd love to hear from Shannon now. Please, Shannon, unmute yourself and tell your story. Hello, Shannon. Well, I met Simona a month ago on Clubhouse. Robbie helped me structure my story because it was way too long because I love to talk. And uh, Lucy is here too, and she's been supporting me. So I just wanted to give y'all a shout out. I may read some of it too, because I cry with everything. So please don't forgive worry me. about it. This is what we're, <laughs> we're all holding the space. Look at this. We're, we're all I love you, Simona. Thank you so much. You're such a light. Um, so I'm Shannon. I'm a storyteller of women and also non-binary folks through intimate portraiture. Um, but today I'm going to share my story. I was always a confident woman. I spent my young adult years really figuring out who I was and I loved who I saw in the mirror. That was until I was in a marriage where I felt unloved, unsupported, invisible, and I just questioned my self-worth on a daily basis. Many aspects of our marriage were kept secret. I couldn't even tell those closest to me. So I, while I couldn't share my pain, what I soon realized is that I could tell other people's pain and heal their trauma. By getting to know women on a really intimate level and photographing them exactly where they were at that time in their life, we began to heal together. So at this time, I had never felt more <laughs> unseen, but guiding women on how to feel at home in their own bodies is what helped me really tell my story and heal everything that was going on inside of me. A year after I divorced, I decided I was gonna tell my story and I was really, really afraid to do so because I knew once I did, it, there was no going back. But what I had no awareness of was just how many women were going to reach out to me. I had text, emails and calls from so many women that said, I've been through this, this is my story and I finally feel seen and heard. And so looking back, um, I just wish that there was one woman, one person who had told my story because I would have felt so much less alone. I would have felt not so much like I was on, on an island and there was no rescue in sight. So now I tell my story. I tell it wherever I go. I tell it to whoever will listen because what I'm hoping is that someone else will feel brave enough to tell their own. I kind of look at it as a domino effect of if women stand in their own courage and can tell their story, then other women will stand in theirs and tell theirs. So there are always instances where we have trauma to heal or we have milestones to celebrate. And I really feel that women should be able to redefine what beauty is to them and what self-worth is to them. And I feel like you should be able to define what that is to you. So if you're waiting until you're in that perfect emotional space where you feel like you can tell your story, it is never going to happen. And I want to ask you today, if you don't tell your story, who is? Thank you. Shannon. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't cry. <laughs> that was gorgeous, Thank Shannon. Thank you. That was Appreciate absolutely it. beautiful. Robbie, do you want to jump in? I think there's the next one is Elizabeth. Elizabeth, are you here? Elizabeth Nelson, are you still with us? Elizabeth? Hi. Yes, hi. Hi, hey, I didn't know I was I didn't know I was gonna get a call out. <laughs> Come on, we want to hear your story. We want to hear your um, story. Shannon, please, Shannon, will you share your details, my darling, in the chat box? Shannon, because somebody wants to connect with you. Oh, Marco says, very inspiring, Shannon. Yeah, Marco would be a lovely connection. Elizabeth, over to you. One minute. Come on. So, okay. I, I like to talk too. <laughs> um, this has been a great hour um, to hear everyone and hear their stories. And I feel like my story is just kind of, blah, you know, it's not that exciting. Um, but I have what I have realized is the pandemic sort of made me look at um, a lot of my friends, and I I guess I I got really sad um, probably mid last year when I realized a bunch of my friends were were racist and um, not very accepting of people with different backgrounds, and it really bothered me um, that I had surrounded myself with friends that I've been friends with for 35 plus years 
and that I obviously didn't know. I thought I knew, but that I didn't know. Um, so I think that's really the the thing that has come out of um, being in lockdown and being in a, in a pandemic and sort of having that time to reflect and see yourself and see who you're surrounding yourself with. Um, so I think my my you know my need to make new friends and make sure that I'm spreading love and not hate. I know that sounds cliched, but, um, but it's true. I mean, it's really, it's that simple. So yeah, that's it. That, that's, that's uh, Elizabeth, thank you for sharing that, you know, round of applause to you for, for speaking, for speaking, you know, like that, and that, that is, you know, that is the key you know, that is a big story, you know, and it's, and it's, it's the, it's the most important, you know, work that we can do collectively. And it's really important to speak up um, and really talk about it. So I really thank you. Yeah. you know, no more people. staying silent and no more accepting, um, you know, hate and, and just, oh, you know, not speaking up for people who don't have a voice because there are so many people who we've been hearing from all the speakers tonight um, that don't have a voice and being able to be compassionate to everyone because everyone has a different story and everyone goes through trauma in a different way and a different, you know, they were, they respond differently. So we need to just be more compassionate to one another. So, yeah. Oh, Elizabeth, that's beautiful. There's some messages for you, Elizabeth, please have a look at the, at the chat box. Rosetta, do you want to jump in Rosetta and tell us the story of Aska? Rosetta, one minute. Tell us the story of Ask and where you're taking your brand. Come on, put it up there. Quick, quick. Yeah. One minute. So um, we go around. Please, next, I want everyone, I want to hear from everyone because we got we got a few minutes left. And and the more stories, the more connections. And please have a look at the chat box. But after this weekend, we, you can always reach out to infotub.com if there's anyone that you've heard of, an idea. Maybe in three days from now, you think, oh my goodness, I remember that person at that event. You send us an email. That's what we do behind the scenes. We work on Alchemy 24-7. Uh, this is our calling, uh, our, our bliss. So please, always get in touch. Rosetta, the story of your brand. Come on. Yeah. You're coming um, from originally from Nigeria, in London. What, what is Aska? You go one minute. Off you go. Um, thank you, everyone. And um, thank you for this opportunity, um, Updot. And um, it's so lovely to be here with all of you. And uh, I'm super excited, as always. And um, I'm really happy where Brand Aska is. So uh, Brand Aska is your Afrobrit fusion um, um, one-stop online shop, all things African fabric. And... Um, I've always wanted to branch into my own fabrics and I can say it's not happening. So today I'm wearing my gele. My gele in my Nigerian pidgin English means uh, my head wrap. And um, gele it, for me is a symbol of uh, my freedom. You know, is my crown. Um, it's what distincts me. So when I go out, I when I rock the gele, you know, um, I just know that somebody is going to say, you look good, you know, I and I love to show off, you know, showing off is, is not a bad thing. And I just love to splash out, you know, colors. And I really love um, where this journey has taken me to, uh, that I'm not able to create my own fabrics. So today I'm wearing um, one of my design. If you go to my website, askalondon.com, you will see the whole um, uh, range. This um, collection is called Beautiful Nostalgia. And um, I named Rosetta, tell us what you need, because I want to tell us, what is it that you, you, the connection that you're looking for? Come on, to take Aska to the next level. Put it out there, Alchemy Request. Yes, yes. Um, I want um, to get us, um, uh, this collection into um, um, the big stores. Um, the retail chain, that's where I want to take this to because this is a very luxury um, product and um, it's not just luxury, it's the story behind it. And um, it was created here in the UK with love. And um, I think every woman should actually own a piece 
So I would so like- listen, Rosetta just said it was made in the UK with so much love. Jessica, do you think we can make this little really amazing connection that Rosetta could talk to somebody at Anthropology about her incredible brand? Can we say, yeah, get me the info and I can pass it along to the right people. Uh, uh, uh. I My told favorite you thing to do. Come, come on, can we hear more stories? Can you? Um, I saw somebody. I I want to ask you where is where is my friend? It, K, I can't read your name. K K D U N C zero zero eight. That's your. <laughs> I want to hear you. I don't know why I'm a witch. Unmute yourself. Tell us your story. I can't even pronounce your name. <laughs> uh, my name is Kendall, and Shannon uh, invited me into this chat. Kendall. I'm- you tell us your story um I don't really I don't know what story I would even tell I even asked Shannon like am I gonna be chosen what do I do <laughs> you see no um, but where, 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 are, where are you at where, where where are you based tell us tell us about you I'm it- currently in uh, Miami Florida I'm dog sitting so if you hear any screeching dogs it's not a baby it's a dog okay. um <laughs> but I guess a story that I could tell is it t- I'm 31 and it took me probably seven or 10 years to finally get to the end goal of my career, which is to be a clinical reg- registered dietitian. Um, and in my breakout room, Nikisha, is that how I say your name? I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Um, she said something that I felt deeply with and it was it's not easy to be you um and just be who you are be an honest person and I think that because I had not had identified myself with a career I wasn't able to be myself and I wasn't able to be open and meet new people because I was embarrassed and ashamed that you know I was still 30 and I didn't have I was living at home with my parents and I didn't have an established career and I realized that's okay. That's where I'm at in life. And I'll get to where I need to when I'm supposed to. And just trust in yourself and trust in life as a process. And eventually you'll succeed. And I great. love that. That is such a beautiful, powerful message in that story, right? Just trust that it will just happen. It will- Carolyn, it wasn't that just so precious, right? That is the key. That is the secret. <laughs> well done, you did. Can we give a round of applause, please? Come on. That was brilliant. Okay. Who are put next? We have- that was beautiful. Sorry, Simona, I know that um, Nikisha's still here and Nikisha did share a beautiful, she had some really powerful words to say. I'd love to hear from you, Nikisha, if you're, if you're with us and you'd like to speak. Hey guys, how are you? I am a guest of Shannon Griffin. So Kendall, thank you for that. Um, Sometimes when I speak, I have no idea, um, but that is my mission in life. So my story is I have been on earth for 40 years and being here, I grew up where my mother was a single parent. She worked very hard in everything she did to make sure I was seen and heard. Um, At times I didn't feel like that because in elementary school, being smart meant you were being bullied. Um, Of course, as time goes by, that puts a hurting on who we are as people. Society has a way of not making us feel heard and seen. Um, And it's, it's crappy. It's not easy. But the joy is that the experiences you have in your past and in my past has gotten me to where I am today. Um, I've I have my own business. I came from a healthcare background, wanted to be a thoracic surgeon and changing that and joining the creative world. Um, I still love business and I do that and I do that well for me and and the people I serve. But my story here today and the thing I want you guys to know is the the main story I always hear is someone doesn't want to be themselves. They hide. That's the worst thing you can do is when you hide Everyone has a purpose. You do have a gift. Your gift is precious and it belongs only to you. Everyone can't serve as you do. So in the last call um, or the last breakout room, that's what I shared with people because it should be heard every day because every day we battle with who we are. And the time like I did when I found myself and I found the skin that I'm in, thanks to Shannon and some other people in my groups. And this was practically between last year, last quarter and this year, 
I can speak like this because I'm now authentically me with no holes bar. Um, and it's one of the best gifts I've been given. And sometimes I'm scared that I might lose it, but I really don't think I will. So um, that is my story. I don't have an ask because this for me is a special gift. I was invited in this morning to this event and I showed up and it's been a gift to hear the stories and to see people. And I thank you guys for that. Thank you so beautiful. Oh, your little one, it's your little girl. Just <laughs> oh, wow. How stunning. Shannon, thank you so much for the connection. Oh, wow. This is a beautiful group. You know, every time we host events, look at me, I'm, I'm a wreck. Also because it's half past 12 in London. And I literally, and I'm just feeling very, very overwhelmed. But, you know, every time we do our events, I always think, we got to bring everyone together again. It's not possible that I'm not going to see, you know, Caroline and, and Leila. This is crazy. We can't just disperse ourselves, right? We got to absolutely keep in touch. So there's so much that has been shared tonight. And I just really want to make sure I want to just say this again. If you do want to connect with somebody in particular, if there's something that you think you've matured and you want to share, you need help with, please let us know through anthropology, through us directly, info at dot. Let us know because, it, you know, this is just the beginning, right? It's not just an event that we, we, we lead, we've been nurturing this community over many, many years. And this is about continuing that narrative and that story all together. I think we had Maureen. Is it Maureen? There's yeah, the last hi. one. Yeah, I'll go in last. Um, Maureen, hi. Say, uh, you're the last hi. one. How are, is it Maureen? Oh, I'm the closer. <laughs> Maureen, yeah. Hi, yeah. Lovely to have um, you. Oh, my God, thank you. I'm in the New York area. Um, nice. Cassandra, thank you. I also was very, what a gift to be invited. Um, like Cassandra, I too am, uh, it's just interesting hearing people speak more about identity. So I do creative work and design. Ironically, I do brand identity, but never in my whole career did I finally look at my own identity. I, this is just quickly some of my own illustrations, so very quick. Wow. Um, that was probably very fast. <laughs> But I was just listening to everybody else and I feel like even though my story is transitioning and I'm um, six months into it and um, it's just interesting in life and where you get to and did it take the world to shut down? No, I was asking those difficult questions within weeks of lockdown and I know we've all faced things and it's been fascinating hearing that from everyone. But I think what I was personally feeling a lot about is I've just been someone that poured myself so much into my career. And I, again, I um, actually work in the sports industry and done a number of high profile things. I've worked with the NFL. I, I work with the NFL. I work with Major League Baseball and all these things. And for years, it was just depleting. And I don't, while it's great also to build your, I did all, but it just in the end, it's, um, I guess, just to keep it to a minute, I feel like my narrative, and this is just, <sighs> It's like the first time I finally put myself first and it's been so much more rewarding now. I, I, and I, I've always been a people pleaser that way. Like, it's funny when you work in creative and you do this logo, you literally yeah. get approvals. You're like, do you like this logo? Is this good? Like, <laughs> so um, I'm kind of just coming off that. It was funny. I was just jumping off. I said to the breakout group, I just was coming out to my New York uh, creative team on a Zoom. And um, I got to just say, after all that, it is such a... It's, and we've been doing it since December in little groups. And then, you know what, in the end, people just go, I can see you're happy. That's, 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 good. That that's good for you. Instead of putting all their thing, putting everybody else's thing first. So that's my story. Maureen, thank you so much for sharing. And I just, oh my Thanks. goodness. So I, 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 Robbie, help me here. I, we, I feel that I, I need to share this with the group and, and particularly, oh, which is <laughs> Maureen, say that, sorry, say that again. Oh, no, I was just joking. I'm like, and cut. Oh, my. <laughs> oh I love it. We're going to capture that in the film. So I, I just got to say, I got to, so we got to wrap up this incredible event. And I, I just got to share this with the group because I think you have helped us, uh, particularly us, Robbie and I tonight, hugely. Because we, when Hubdot started eight years ago, it started in my kitchen table in London, a few friends, a few girlfriends, and we didn't want to literally network in that very superficial way. And from 100, we went into 6,000 and we become this big community. And there was a point a few years back where we felt that it wasn't really about women in the traditional 
terms, right? It was it was something that Hubdo was celebrating and we've been literally spending years and we still are wondering, what is it? How do we talk about that energy? What is underpinning this community? We like to think it's feminine energy. Is it really feminine energy? Is it human energy? And so when we thought about this event, didn't we, Robbie, we said, let's, let's talk about redefining womanhood. And I feel this literally, wow, just here in my heart, I, I thank you all so much because tonight, this event with anthropology, once again, this milestone in the years of the history of Abdot, Jessica, with you and Griselda, we've been truly redefining it and amplifying it and embracing it in our own individuality. And I think, Robbie, this has been the most incredible gift. So I help me, Robbie, isn't that something that yeah, we remember? I think the, the most amazing thing and the thing that we, we always like to say is, obviously, we still do women's events, we want to create safe spaces for women, absolutely. Um, I'm a non-binary person, I don't identify as a woman. I feel very safe here. I very, very feel very welcome here. And I think the, the thing that we as HubDot would, would love everyone to know is that we, we feel like we're, we're transcending gender. We're coming to a point where we, we're not trying to be for anyone in particular. If anyone resonates with us, if anyone has a story they want to share with us, everyone is welcome and that includes obviously trans people because I am one of you um but also non-binary people also men also you know trans men like I don't think just because we wanted to put on a event for celebrating women and womanhood doesn't mean that we're we're limited to any particular audience we're for everyone we're here for you all and we're listening and we're um we can't wait to welcome everyone to the next event please join no, us no which is going to be there and we hope we can see you again uh, Jessica Thank you so much for making this possible tonight. Thank you to every single person in this room. I mean, I am lucky enough to be the one who makes the events, so I got to be here, but I just wish my entire company, my entire team, everyone could be here and listen to it and experience it. So I will be sharing this with them as well because they need to hear it. And we as a brand are excited to move forward with HubDot and to keep doing these things that are pushing the boundaries a little bit pushing the envelope, giving us all a chance to be more equal and love each other and really just come from a place of positivity and progression. So thank you all again for being a part of it tonight. Wow. Thank you all so much. I think we're going to, we're going to play Simona, a piece of music. And we Simona, before you finish, please, since it, this is, this whole evening has been about really finding our voices and finding our story, please just say a few words about our storytellers workshop. Because sure. So we absolutely, think, you know yeah. me, I was, okay. So, so basically we started, uh, we've been coaching and helping so many thousands of storytellers around the world. And then a few, literally months ago, a few people came and said, will you help me as well tell my story? So we put together this five week course, which is online and there's a part and Shannon is doing it. Come and find out. It's all on the website and it's about really helping you craft and find your voice and shape it into that minute and a half. We believe that Every story is a story worth, you know, worthy, and the world needs to hear it. And there's a way of, sh of, of putting it together that is really clever that we've been doing through many, many people with Brenda Lee's help. And so find out if you're interested. Thank you, Steffi, for, for prompting it. I'm going to play this song as, as, a, as, a, as a goodbye song to everyone. Four, three, two, one. Level up. Level up. We said it would be a party, right? Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. Viva Anthropology, Anthropology forever. Grazie Jessica, grazie Griselda, Kate. We have Kate, Nikisha, Brenda Lee from Antigua. Robbie, thank you so much. Leila, Lee, Leila, Lei, and her beautiful sound. Check her out. Grazie mille. Ciao, everyone. Jessica, you rock, you close it. Bye, everyone. You go. Ciao, guys. Oh, it's a drama. See me as you pray, nothing I'm afraid of, and I can have it all. Hi, oh my God. Lucrez. Three, two, one. Lucrez. Level up, 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 level up. Zoe, Zoe, darling, well done. So, so yummy. Do you want to see me? Fabulous. Fabulous. Cassandra, where are you? Cassandra, and she goes. Cassandra, and her daughter. 
Brenda Lee, thank you so much. And Sally from Antigua will be with us. Yeah. 